So if you wanna learn how to hit more power in your one-handed backhand, this is the video you need to watch. Because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hit more power using your kinetic chain the right way. So if you're out there thinking that, hey, my one-handed backhand, I just can't hit it the right way, I can't get it to produce power, make sure you stay tuned because I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step how to do it in this video. So like I talked about in the intro, you're gonna learn how to hit more power on your one-handed backhand. And the reason this is so important is because the idea that most players have when they're playing a one-handed player is what? Hit to the one-handed backhand. Generally, one-handed backhand players, if they don't know how to use their connect chain, is weak. They can't really create any pace. Maybe they slice a little bit, maybe it's great for a change-up, but they can't really hurt you. And so a lot of players just deem that, hey, let's just hit to their one-handed backhand. Other thing is, they don't like balls above their shoulder. Well, I'll tell you this. When you start learning to use your kinetic chain and create more racketed speed with the racket, you can deal with balls that are higher, lower, or whatnot. It doesn't matter as much as long as you use your body the right way. That's why this is so important. It's just not about going out and trying to hit winners. It's about the possibility or the options you're going to have by learning to use your kinetic chain the right way. So, first of all, we're going to talk about the three things I don't want you to try to do or the things that I see that are the big problems with the one-handed backhand that a lot of players are doing. One is this. They start elbowing the ball and don't do this and the reason why is you're going to start putting too much stress on your elbow and this is why a lot of players with one-handed backhands have issues with their elbow they're actually trying to create racket of speed from their elbow they think if i do it like this then i'll be able to create some sort of power stop don't do it anymore after you watch this video you'll learn how to do it the right way the next thing is fish tailing fish tailing is basically instead of doing the elbow now we're going to do the wrist and so I'm just gonna flap my, my racket at the ball. This is a weak muscle, just like the elbow. And so by using those weak muscles, you're gonna put a lot more stress on your wrist and your elbow. And finally, it's what I call the strong man or woman, is that they do this. It's nobody, they, they know they're supposed to turn sideways and they kind of flinch at the ball and kind of muscle through it and they still don't get any power. If you're doing any one of these three things or something else that feels like you're not getting power, stop, pay attention. Now that we have those three things you shouldn't be doing out of the way, let's talk about the kinetic chain. What is it? The kinetic chain is really a sequence of how you use your body to create and store energy and release it through your hand. Now that may sound super complicated, but just like I do this right now to jump, it's how I stored energy and I'm releasing that energy up. You can do that exact same thing to store energy and release the energy through your swing. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. But the way we store the energy is starting with the ground force. We're gonna push against the ground and use our legs to push up, which is gonna turn our hip, then turn our shoulder, and then pull the racket into contact. But it's just not that simple. There's one extra element that I think a lot of players miss out on, which is what I call the leverage point. A leverage point is how I'm gonna show you to hold your racket that gives you more leverage. So meaning that on top of creating great racketed speed, if you hold the racket a certain way, it's gonna increase the speed of the racket on top of what your body's doing, which basically leverages you to create a lot of energy going through the ball and it makes it so much easier to hit the one-handed back one with more pace. So let's get started. The first phase is the coil. A coil phase is gonna involve you splitting and doing a step, an out step. Now, there's a couple of things you wanna realize when you're doing this. You're either moving to the ball or you're about to hit the ball. I'm gonna reference about to hit the ball. So what that means is instead of taking this outside step and running to the ball and then getting set here, this is where we're gonna start from. So we're gonna split and take this outside step. Now a couple key things that are important here with this outside step is that I'm loading my outside leg and I've created separation between my upper and my lower half. And what I mean by separation is that my hips are facing this direction, and my shoulders are facing this direction. That separation starts to store some energy on top of me loading this leg and this knee where it's not a huge load, but you feel it. And that starts the coiling process. You're storing the energy. From this process here, we're in a coil, we're gonna take a step forward, but we're not gonna transfer my weight. This is where I'm waiting for the ball to get into striking distance. All right, let's talk about the uncoiling part, which is the swing. The swing portion is also, when I get to this point here, the swing is gonna drop the racket down to what I call the slot position or the butt pull position. And this is that position of the racket I was talking about that's so, so important. The reason it's important is because it's leverage, meaning that it works like a hammer. In a hammer, if I pull the head down or pull the handle down, the head goes a lot faster, just like this. You're probably saying, Kevin, how does this relate to me hitting a one-handed backhand? Well, most players don't do that. They actually would use a hammer like this, and I'll explain exactly what I mean in a second. 
when most players hit their one-handed backhand, what they do is have the racket like this and they pull it forward, meaning that the hand and the head are moving almost in the same distance at the same time, just like this action here. Compared to this hammering action where I'm moving the hand a little bit and the head moves a lot more. You can see a big difference in how, if I'm hammering here, how the head's moving versus this direction. And so what that means in this hammering fashion that I'm showing you here, if I do it this way, but I change to my backhand grip, it works the exact same way. Whereas I'm pulling the handle, the head comes around quicker. It works with that same leverage idea as a hammer. And so if we're in this position where I've stored the energy in my leg, in my separation, and I'm stepping, about to step forward, I'm gonna drop the racket, which creates some momentum, and then turn my hip into the ball, and then let that leverage position work its way through the shot, and then open up and finish. This is huge. Learning to drop and get the leverage, and then turning the hip. Just by turning the hip, you can really accelerate the racket and feel as if you're just releasing the ball through the shot. Now let's work on the action steps so you can have a better one-handed backhand using your hips to really uncoil and get some more racket acceleration. So the very first thing I want you to do is focus on standing in this position and all we're gonna do is put your hands on your hips. If you've watched the effortless forehand power video, this is gonna seem very similar, but one change. For the one-handed backhand, we also wanna make sure our toe is facing in the court and we're gonna uh, swivel our hips. And the way we're gonna do it is focusing on this knee. Notice that my knee is looking straight towards the, the baseline here and I'm gonna turn it in. So it's gonna look like this, just turning my knee in, turning my knee in towards my front knee. Now, in the process of turning my knee, guess what it's actually also doing? It's pulling my hip and rotating my hip. And that's what I want you to focus on. Standing here, making sure also that, again, our toes aren't facing, both are facing forward. This is facing slightly inside the court and I'm turning my knee, turning my knee, which lets the heel come off the ground. Sometimes people do this and they're turn, trying to turn the knee and you're like, it's not turning, it's not turning. You have to let that heel come off the ground. So the action is turn the knee here. That's your first sequence that I want you to go through. Get really good at just going from here and turn the knee. Next sequence is making sure we get the racket in the right position so we're preparing the racket to turn the knee. So I'm gonna hold my racket in this position which is a down position. Now, you may already be established and understand where you want your racket up and get to this position. You may be new to this and you might just wanna sit here in this position. You can still get a ton of racket speed just getting in position, but it's really crucial that you get your racket into this position where the strings are facing slightly back and not just sideways, here. So if we hold it here, pretty much laying it on my leg and holding it with my hand, and all I'm gonna do is turn my knee, okay? And when I turn my knee, it's gonna turn my hips towards contact. And what's gonna happen is if I let that racket go forward, you can see how the racket isn't doing that much work. It's the knee and my hips that are doing it. I'm creating a lot of racket speed without even moving my racket. Now, if we combine this with what we have here, which is the leverage position, this is where you're gonna to start to see how you can create a lot of racket speed. But I'm jumping the gun. Just focus on getting the racket here and turning the knee. And when I turn the knee, again, my hips are gonna be focusing on looking towards contact. So turn and turn. Do this a couple reps before you really, so you can really get the hang of this. So what we're gonna focus on right now is since we have the racket in this position, all we're gonna do is create a little separation between my hips and shoulders and focus on turning the knee and then releasing the racket. Again, by turning the knee, it's going to start sending my racket forward into contact. The really important part is to think about this rotation starts here and then it ends here. It ends slightly past contact. So I'm pulling the racket through contact and then relaxing. So a lot, pretty much most of the energy is created through having this leverage that's now being pulled around. And you understand that even though we started just talking about pulling the leverage around this way with my arm, really the leverage is being pulled by my hips and then released. And so what this looks like is with the separation, keeping the racket low, I'm gonna turn the knee and release. Ready, one more time. Turn the knee and release. And so the way you wanna practice this with yourself is simply get the racket in this position. You can take a ball in your opposite hand, toss a little higher and turn the knee and release. Again, toss a little higher and turn the knee and release. And you can really see the racketed speed I'm gaining. Now, I don't want you to worry about getting it in. Just worry about the racketed speed right now. Ready? And 
and release. Once you get comfortable with just turning the knee and making sure you're doing all the same, then you start focusing on maybe what the racket face is doing at contact in the path, meaning how I'm coming up and making contact with the ball. And that's really what sends the ball in the direction with the amount of spin. But as long as you're getting tons of racket speed, this is what you want to create more power on your one-handed back end. So in summary, it's really important that you understand that when you're taking your racket back, you wanna create separation between your hips and your shoulders and you wanna load that leg. It's so important because most players, the biggest mistake they make is they run to the ball, no separation, or they think they're separated and during the turn, they're actually their shoulders and hips are facing the same direction and there's no separation here. Notice the difference from here and here. It makes a huge difference. You can feel the storing of energy here that you can start to use when you actually hit the ball. Number two, make sure you get into the slot position, what I call the butt pull position. That hammering position where you leverage pulling the handle down and getting the head to move a lot more. In that position now, you can really get your racket head accelerating. Don't get caught up into this motion where most players are trying to muscle it. And this is where they start getting to the elbow position compared to getting into this nice slot position and pulling the racket forward. Number three, work on turning that knee into the shot. Turning the knee is a great exercise to help you turn your hips. If you get used to turning that knee in, it's gonna fire the hip off and ignite the rest of the swing so you can really feel the amount of racket head acceleration you get through the ball. So if you like this video, make sure you give me a like and also make sure you visit TotalTennisDomination.org to get more great videos just like this and sign up for our free consistency course. All you have to do is hit level up, sign up, you'll get a free account and you'll get access to my brand new free consistency course to help you improve your consistency so the next time you go out and play a match, you're not losing matches because you're not making balls. One more thing, as you're turning the knee and creating all this energy that's gonna be pulling forward, what you'll notice, and as you're pulling in the slot position, you'll notice your racket head's gonna wanna come around. You may think, hey, maybe I'm fishtailing, but there's a big difference between fishtailing, meaning not using my body, and then turning and allowing the racket to explode through the ball. By this turn action, you're gonna feel as if this head wants to go through and that's totally fine, but let it come through and forward. Don't stiffen it up. So a lot of times players will do this and they'll get really stiff and you'll have this type of finish. You wanna let the racket flow and come around. And that sequence is just letting it go up and around through the shot. But again, the biggest focus is on how you're gonna use and manage your kinetic chain, meaning that how you're gonna separate get on this outside leg, drop the racket, and let it come all the way around, but initiating everything with this turn of the knee that's gonna really accelerate your racket through the ball.